Good morning, traders. It is Tuesday, April the 2nd. Taking a look at the charts, yesterday we had a pretty good little pullback in the market, and a lot of people were starting to get really fearful, but overall, when we were looking at our charts, we were dipping down into just a short-term oversold area in the equities market, and really, we were holding up all key levels, and everything was showing that it, we're still in a very strong uptrend until we really get a big crack to, to the downside and we see heavy volume then uh, then we've got something to worry about and to really start uh, adjusting our positions and our stops but uh, until then we really just have to continue to ride this bull market and look to buy on dips significant dips uh, like we have in the last two dips that we've seen in the last couple months and just keep adding and, and taking some profits and tightening stops as the market moves up so anyways let's just take a look at the US dollar index you can see here it's still in a strong uptrend it's kinda starting to look as though it's rolling over or trade sideways here for a little bit yesterday we saw pretty much money flow out of everything in the equity and the uh, financial markets uh, except for gold and bonds uh, we saw the US dollar sell off fairly strong and of course equities sold off also this morning we're seeing a little bit of a bounce in the US dollar if we just zoom in a bit here you can see more or less it's a nice steady kind of um, move up we're seeing a, a little bit of uh, price kind of start to round out a little bit possibly that it's gonna lose some momentum but overall it's had just a simple pullback of course each low has been a little bit higher and uh, this still has room to come down a little bit more but overall it's still holding up very well and the US dollar continues to march its way higher um, not a whole lot really insight from the US dollar the past couple of weeks it's uh, it's just becoming a little more choppy kind of consolidating here in a sideways more or less pattern and we'll have to see which way it breaks but overall it's not directly connected to the stock market in terms of when the dollar goes up one tick stocks go down one tick uh, that kind of broke off uh, late last year and it's really been hit or miss uh, depending what happens and recently really since the, for the last month and a half we've seen a very close correlation where if the dollar goes down stocks go down if the dollar goes up stocks go up and uh, yesterday we saw that very clearly this morning we've got the US dollar coming straight back up here and of course we're seeing equities come straight back up again with it it seems that money overall is flowing into the US dollar and US stocks at the same time and they're leaving at the same time which just goes to show that the US is more of a safe haven it seems a uh, um, investors around the world are wanting to put their money there they feel as though they won't get it taken away from them in a bag all those things so we're seeing money flood into the US market which is a good thing taking a look at commodities here let's just jump to the crude oil chart real quick um, not a whole lot going on in crude oil it is trading up at resistance I pointed this out uh, last week and again uh, yesterday overall we could have some time now that it's trading up here it could take several weeks uh, for it to kind of top out and start to break down again or depending what it does it could build a launch pad and break out to the upside overall not really a whole lot of insight with crude oil right here and so I'm not really looking to get involved in it anytime soon looking at natural gas continues to kind of march its way up it had that nice run up last week it's kind of pulling back uh, chopping around here if we just jump to the daily chart real quick and zoom back a bit you can see we are we've, we've cleared this previous high here we're really holding up here it is kind of grinding its way up very similar price section to what you see uh, near market tops where you get uh, kind of a choppy kind of grind here I do feel as though it's it's due for a pullback simple visual analysis if you just look at these runs that we've seen in the past just the length of the um, actual rallies these yellow lines they're all about the same length and um, generally once it's moved this much we we see some type of pause or pullback and uh, depending how you want to draw some things you, you could have a couple different uh, trend lines drawn across here and we could have a pullback down to the 350 area before prices kind of stabilize and go higher uh, overall I'm not a fan of natural gas I am a little bit more bearish on it at this point um, but again it continues to move up and, uh, and and rally so I don't really want to get in front of it just yet taking a look at precious metals here's the four hour chart of gold uh, gold yesterday really kind of stood out everything sold off except for go, uh, gold and bonds just going to show that gold is more of a safe haven than uh, 
most other things, but utility stocks, all the all those uh, safe kind of sectors, uh, safe haven sectors, somewhat were all still down fairly heavy yesterday, while gold more or less traded flat. It was up a, a tenth of a percent. Bonds had the main inflow; they were up about uh, three tenths of a percent. Uh, silver was down, obviously, over a percent and a half at one point. Uh, just showing that it is speculative and that people were just rolling out of all their speculative plays. Gold miners, silver miners are all down sharply. Uh, people are starting to get really spooked and starting to give up in those commodities. And that's a good thing. We want to see them get spooked and just roll over on any day of selling. We want to see them just start to uh, jump out of those positions. And that usually means we're coming close to a bottom uh, in the uh, gold and silver miners and uh, likely the uh, gold and silver bullion itself. So take a look at silver chart. Silver, you can see silver is starting to lose some ground, starting to pick up speed to the downside. If we just go to the daily chart and zoom back a bit, you can you can just see what happens once these waterfall falls start here. This is a key pivot zone here. It's trying to hold up. It's trading below it right now. We've got a little bit of increased volume here starting to pick up. But you can just see that once once you start to get these roll the price roll over, you see these downdrafts where it just picks up speed and you just see price waterfall and collapse. And uh, that could be very close to where we are. And if we see that, we've got major support down here around the 96.25 area, or sorry, sorry 26.25 uh, area. And we could see price pick up speed and just kind of really collapse into there and, and see everything panic out, see some strong volume. And then from there, I think we could see a really strong rebound uh, back up to the 30 level and uh, and and some pretty good price action going from there along with gold and silver miners bottoming but we really need to see things flush out here and that will clear the air uh, there's still a lot of people lingering and holding on hoping that the, they're going to it's going to bottom sometime soon and i think we really need to see another big percent drop here uh, over the next few uh, weeks that's going to really bleed everybody out and then then we'll see the bottom put in Looking at gold miners, gold and silver miners, pretty much the same charts, uh, give or take a little bit of a difference, but overall, uh, same thing. I really would like to see this really start to either just drift down and kind of maybe push to a new low, or or I'd like to really see it roll over and, and create a sharp drop here. And then from there, I think we could see a very strong rally and then continue to take off from there. So uh, overall, waiting for continued uh, weakness in these sectors until they really build a base. They, they're trying to build something here, but overall it's still a, a bear flag. Price action goes to show that we'll probably see it come down, test down down near these lows at 36, and with any luck we'll get a breakdown and a, one final real wave that stretches down f a lot further than most people think it will. Could go all the way down to 34 um, or even lower. It'll be a complete panic selling. Uh, that could put the bottom in and we'll actually be looking to possibly uh, stick our toe in once we see that type of price action. Take a look at bonds. You can see bonds yesterday had the real um, had a real pop in price. We've got key resistance right up across this, this zone across here and you can see we had a strong pop up yesterday. It's still lingering. It, it has broken above these prices but it the price action really hasn't closed strongly above it and it looks as though it wants to pull back and I think if the if we see equity start to rally uh, this week I think we're gonna see this stall right out and probably eventually come right back down to the 43 and maybe even come back down to the 41 but overall there's so much fear in the market that you get one little wave of selling yesterday which we had which volume was relatively light um, people were still really scared even though there was no real power behind it. It was just a lack of buyers and just sellers were in the market yesterday. It, was, it wasn't it was any real distribution selling in my opinion. Um, and, but bonds continue to go up. So we could see bonds linger. I would more or less think bonds linger up here uh, between the 43 and 45 area for a while. Probably until the equities market uh, tops out and pulls back possibly in a couple weeks or in May. And then we'll see bonds explode to the upside and be a safe haven for a few weeks. Taking a look at the SP500, if we just pull up the daily chart, this is the SPY ETF. You can see when the candles are green, we've got an uptrend. When they're orange, there's a possible trend reversal. No new positions are taken, even if there was to be a buy signal on those green those candles, which uh, 
technically there were but once you have a possible trend reversal cycles possibly reversing down you've got sentiment shifting uh, volume shifting uh, once the candles go orange we don't add to any positions we don't want to compound um, more or less double down uh, on a on a possible position that could go against us so we actually just hold a position um, overall we're in a nice strong uptrend we've accumulated shares back here we've accumulated more over here on the SP 500 ETFs and we're continuing to push up and test these highs now the chart still looks really bullish if we get a pop which we could see a nice pop today we could start to see or at least this week a break up to the upside we could very easily go into a new grind just like this where we just grind up for a week or two which will bring us halfway into April which I think we could see the the major market start to top out um, very similar to back here once once we break um, you can see we had a pullback and then more or less had this kind of consolidation and then from there once it broke out of there we saw a continued grind that actually we actually had a little bit of a broadening formation back here this was its consolidation and then of course it broke out and, and ground higher for another week after that we could be somewhere in the same boat where we see price just start to consolidate up in another tight channel just kind of grinding its way day after day and uh, eventually I think we're going to get a very sharp crack to the downside probably break below this previous low or even even down more and uh, and then we'll probably be reloaded later in the summer to get long again but overall we'll be looking for shorts eventually once we actually see the market turn over looking at the SP 500 futures you can see where we're trading this morning this is the 20 day moving 20 day moving average uh, overlaid on a 10 minute chart which is why it's stair stepping each step is a day and the closing price so you can see the 20 day is moving up price is moving up above it kind of walking up the stairs we got price by volume uh, the highest uh, volume level which is right across here this is the strongest support zone that's where the majority of all the volume traded was in this price range which happens to be right the 20 day moving average is a very key level If price dips down into there it should find support if it breaks it then we're going to be uh, more or less possibly starting a reversal to the downside overall you can see that the this is the futures chart the SPY ETF doesn't show all this because this is 24 hour clocks so you actually get to see the true range you get to see um, the entire time where the SP 500 only shows about a third of the SP 500 price action because it only trades 930 to 4 but just looking at this stair stepping action you can just see how we're kind of bouncing up this trend line working our way up and really we're getting squeezed up into this level where it gets up there pulls back gets up pulls back gets up chopped up there for a little bit held up in overnight trading uh, eventually had a pop and a sell-off yesterday back down below it but we're starting to violate this line a lot more than just touching it we're breaking through it we're through it again this morning if we can get stability here and really break above this uh, 1565 area I think that will be enough that will shake the shorts out and we'll see it pop and start to run to the upside with more momentum now if we just zoom into the volume a bit let me just stretch it out just looking at the volume yesterday if I was to just draw a line across the middle range of this volume you can see over overall uh, we had a couple big spikes of volume above that 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 line above this volume this mid middle of the day kind of volume high if you go back to these other days there's tons of volume much larger bars uh, you can just see overall it was, it was relatively light day of volume yesterday so it wasn't any huge distribution selling uh, these days back here had much uh, much more uh, selling in it uh, they also had a lot of buying in the afternoon really ramping price back up showing that it's just simple wave of selling and then a wave of buying um, overall uh, the market I think is still holding up really well and I think we got some good potential for more upside now taking a quick look at the underlying kind of breadth of the market looking here we've got the NYSE which is the one I like to follow advancing declining shares these are key numbers here we had a panic selling yesterday at one point it was about five to one there was about five sellers to every one buyer on the NYSE anything over three I consider panic selling and when everybody's rushing for the door usually it's overdone for the day and usually you see some type of rebound the next day and of course we end up closing the day with about a three to one ratio uh, four to one ratio 
where still there was three to four sellers to every one buyer and again when everybody's running for the door it usually uh, you're you're getting out at the wrong time you're, you're really getting out after uh, prices have already dropped uh, you can see here we still got 184 stocks 133 stocks hitting new highs that's good we really want to keep that above the 150 on the NYSC I like it when they're both in the 200s or 300s but overall considering yesterday we're actually holding up still really well if we look at the bar chart momentum index this is a, a really simple table uh, pretty much anything above the 101 when you get up to this level I consider the market to be overbought so when you get up to this level it doesn't matter how high you are above it, it makes really no difference uh, as long as you're up at the 101 it just means that the market has moved usually too far too fast to the upside it's probably going to be a bit of a pause or pullback the next day same thing to the downside anything below 99 when you get down to this level usually the market is oversold usually it's just moved too far too fast to the downside and likely you're going to see some value buyers step in and, and pull prices up the next day so yesterday we did close down to this level we did dip pretty deep into it and came back still closed into the negative territory um, overall we're oversold and this morning we're going to see futures gap up actually uh, quite a bit this morning uh, looking at the SP500 futures just so you can get a feel for where we're going to open if we just zoom in here's yesterday's price action on the left this is yesterday's price action this is 9.30 to 4 that's the heavy volume and then we had overnight trading which volume is obviously very light kind of drifted sideways kind of worked its way up and then this morning we've seen a nice strong move to the upside it's forming a little bit of a uh, bull flag here a little consolidation up at yesterday's previous high uh, with any luck we're going to see uh, hopefully a breakout to the upside and a continued move up so right now the equities market is up about uh, four tenths of a percent pretty much um, gonna put us positive from uh, Friday's close and if we can get some uh, stability here and some buyers back in uh, we'll see things break out to the upside and continue to run anyways that's it for this morning and I'll talk to you in a little bit bye bye